I'm Edie Lush, and I'm here in the Hub Pavilion in Davos, and we're really pleased now to be joined by Nariman Berevish. He's the chief economist for IHS, holding company for a number of brands that you would have heard of, Jane's Defense Weekly, uh, Global Insight. Tell me, first of all, why you're here in Davos. Well, in the end, we're here because uh, we are a partner of the World Economic Forum, and uh, we have actually organized a number of events for our clients. A lot of our clients are here. So it's a way for us to build our brand a little bit more, to, to work with our clients, to, to stop, you know, continue to build on the dialogue we have with our clients, and also to interact with a lot of the other experts around the world. So it's, there's a lot of sort of dimensions of our being here. I want to talk about the economy, because I know that this is something that you know a lot about. Speaking with somebody last night who was saying we're at a real inflection point, there's some good news. There's not a whole lot of it around. Can you give me uh, your, I don't know, the elevator pitch at the moment for the U.S. economy? It very much depends on where you are in the world. We're in a two-speed world. The U.S., Europe, growing, but growing slowly. So good news is the recovery's here. It'll probably keep going. The really good news is in the emerging world, the mood's euphoric, largely because they, you know, they took a little hit, but they've come roaring right back. Mm -hmm. So the mood very much depends on what part of the world you're from. I live in the UK, and it's we're entering into election season at the time when the economy is not getting going for the Labour Party, for example. And it might be a bit of a problem, do you think, in this next election cycle? The economy is just not bouncing back as fast as politicians would like it to be. You're absolutely right. The UK economy was definitely one of the hardest hits. Um, and it's not coming back very strongly. The fourth quarter numbers were essentially as close to zero as you can get without being zero. So mm -hmm. it's a very weak economy. That's certainly going to hurt Gordon Brown and his, his party very much. And so I think, yes, the economy is a serious problem uh, in the UK, less so perhaps in the US right now with that very strong fourth quarter number that we got. But yes, the UK is a mess is the only way to say it, in terms of economics. Tell me a little bit about your feeling about inflation. There's a big debate about whether it's coming back or not to the United States Federal Reserve under a certain amount of scrutiny. How are you viewing the situation in terms of prices? We're not that worried about inflation, mostly because when you have unemployment rates of 10% or more, you have a lot of excess capacity. You're just not going to get inflation in this environment. So I would say inflation is two to three years away. There's one exception, commodity prices. We could see some further rises in commodity prices because of the demand from places like China and so forth. So outside of commodities, the rest of uh, sort of the components of inflation, nothing. Uh, so overall inflation, core inflation, however you want to look at it, it's not going to be a problem for at least two or three years. Tell me a little bit about what the effect this two-speed economy is going to have on, for example, population of the U.S. It's going to be quite interesting if for a long time the U.S. has been the powerhouse of the world, growing very, very quickly. It's not happened. Growth isn't picking up. It is in the, in the developing nations. It is on the su country supplying. How is that going to kind of play out, do you think? Well, here's the tension, because up until recently, the emerging world was counting on exports to the developed world, to the rich countries. Well, that's not going to be there. So the pressure now is on these countries, China, India, and so forth, to develop their domestic economies. And as they do that, it will take some time, five, maybe 10 years. As they do that, consumers in China and India will become the new engines of growth. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen overnight. So, but that's the tension we're now seeing in, in, in the world economy. Herman, thanks so much for taking the time to come in to the Hub Pavilion here in Davos. My Very pleasure. Very pleased to have met you, and I'm Edie Lush.